Hi, and welcome to the story of this little Lupo GTI and how I got its arse saved from the scrapyard. In early 2017, I was looking to buy one of these again after regrettably selling my one. Uh, this time it had to be a specific colour. I wanted this raven blue and uh, no other colour would have done. Uh, searched on the internet and this come up on the auto trader and I called up the guy and it was a big Volkswagen van dealer down in the southwest of the country and he said to me no 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 we just put the car in the advert to try and attract people we're going to advertise the car up and use it as a mascot you know just show off our classic van company so I thought to myself, fair enough, no way for a Lupo GTI to end its life, but there you go. A few months went past, I couldn't find one, so I kept on pestering this geezer. And in the end, we got it off him. It cost me over, you know, the price I wanted to pay, but we got a load of goodies with it. So, before we take this little car for a blast and before I show you around the car, I'm going to show you what it took to get it here. And, you know, a little bit of the expense and the chores. Okay, guys. Just bought this little... This little girl. And, um... I think she's got a bit of potential in her. But at the moment, she needs quite a bit of work we've got that some damage down there on that seal got some tasty little parts on this car got some aftermarket air filter so the main engine cover's been lost but never mind i'm going to clean up all of these bits it's had a new well reconditioned gearbox and the clutch um, the engine is a bit smoky and it will be going um, in the workshop probably for an engine overhaul because this has done 178,000 miles this uh, the interior is not too tidy I'll show you this window and door there's a bit of a problem so we need to look at that behind those speakers are two massive amps and a sub um, I don't know at my age if I need all that. <laughs> um, this steering wheel, uh, OMP, is brand new. But luckily the guy's given me the original steering wheel, so we're going to put that back. So as you can see, she needs a bit of work. A um, bit loud. Uh, I think there's a silence or, or the cat's missing, so we've got to sort that out. <laughs> Here are the parts I've got with the car. Uh, got this Sporks middle box and a Scorpion end can. Uh, got this steering wheel I'll be sorting out myself. But best of all are these original VW Bathurst wheels with brand new tyres. Um, getting them done as well. But right now, priority is, let's go and see George the Mechanic. I better get out of here before, oops, before the neighbors start going mad. If you have a look at here, see that uh, burnt that that valve there burnt out. See right. It? Yep. It should be it should be round, but of it's course, burnt on the yeah. corner. See the little gaps there. Also, look. Knocking in. Playing them. Right, these ones here. There's no playing that one. Are they all the exhaust in playing them? So, so as that's going up and down, 
is letting a bit of air oil in it because these are the seals. We've got seals here. This is full of oil in there. It's, and because it's going like that, it's letting oil going in and out. Okay. But I love this. All right. So, so all these. Yeah. Baths them seals. Guides as well. We're going to put some new guides. Lap them in. New valves. Will the head get skimmed? No, the skin doesn't need it. I don't, I don't no, know. it doesn't need skin. I can skim it if you want, but it doesn't need Yeah, it. I don't mind. <laughs> Not a mark here. Yeah? There's no lip or anything like that, and there's no play in the pistons. Yeah? So this is the reason why one or two of my neighbours don't love me anymore. We've got a catalyst missing, we've got a middle silencer missing, in fact, all we've got is a stainless steel pipe going all the way back to a sports end can. So uh, we're going to fit this sports middle silencer on and uh, gain some love back from the neighbours. So finally, after getting the car back from George the Mechanic, engine running sweet, I had a couple of days with the Lupo before it was booked in to go into the body shop, so I made the time a bit constructive. I can't help thinking that this tailor-made setup would make someone far happier than me. <laughs> Maybe a couple of decades ago. They arrived today from Germany. I was going to wait until I got it back from the body shop, but nah, can't wait. Uh, right, today we're going to go down and do a couple of bits and pieces and check on the Lupo. The Lupo's with the sprayer at the moment just got a few bits to give to the sprayer there's a rear wiper motor in there somewhere and a couple of other chores to do so let's get down to the sprayer see how he's getting on and uh, record some bits down in the garage All right, we're at the Lupo, and let's see what's happened so far. Yeah. It's just the... Did you, did you lift it? Also? Yeah, I lifted it. I had a look. I put it just for the rain, this temporary cover. Yeah. Come here. You see these? Yeah. That is a hole. It's, you see, it's more. It's all black. That's where it came from, and it bubbles. Yeah. You know. I, I thought it would be bad because of the bubbling. Yeah. Right. This is. And uh, look what I've done. I've cut the plate already. Cut the plate, so I've shaped it up. <laughs> I've shaped the plate. That's new plate. Yeah. We'll clean that all up. Weld it all underneath, and it will cover the whole area. So after finding some more rust around the hatchback and the problem with the door and the window, I left Arton to it, went and got the wheels and took them down to my refurbishment centre. Here we are, one week later, and I've parked the car up and taken a little walk around because they're quite busy. Don't know how long I'm going to be here for.
You wouldn't believe this place is hidden in central London. I've been here a couple of times. It's a proper wheel heaven. Powder coating, sandblasting, all that good stuff. So here are the wheels and I've done them in chrome shadows, nice and classy, expensive look and much better than that plain old silver. No, no choice because if I weld here, yeah. I can't grind the actual bit there. So I had to put a, a piece of metal from inside and I will... No, that's put, fine. You know, I'll put it from here, look. You see that small piece there? It's because it's, it's so flimsy. Yeah. Don't worry, it's fine. Shit, I pulled some up. Oh no. I thought we pulled it. <laughs> right, that one, it's all welded. I mean, I tell me the problem with this is, right, it's very good, it's healthy now, but this, in the future, they will last you more than the actual seal. Right, so would you reckon another week or so? No, man, it will be next week. Next week will be end of the week. End of the week. This week. It's <laughs> Oh dear. Right, I had a feeling this would happen. Um, because these rotor wheels are about an inch wider than the standard rim, and you've got these flared arches, and the car has been lowered, the original wheels have kind of tucked into the, um, to the arches. So what I'm gonna do is go and have the uh, tracking done, get some spacers fitted, get the camber done as well, because these rotor wheels were a bit offset and the car's got KW coilovers as well so I'm going to make sure all the height adjustments are proper and not too mad, not too low. But um, we're on the final stint with this car so better speed it up.
This car was literally stuffed away in a barn when I bought it, eventually destined to be broken down and its expensive parts to be sold on. I had to revive it for the sake of every Volkswagen fan around the world, for the sake of today's Volkswagen's designers and engineers to remind them of their golden past and fairly mundane future. Absolutely gorgeous. Now let's take her for a blast. <laughs> slightly skimmed and also I made the decision to change the piston rings that was just for a peace of mind that that was my own decision big damage on the seal also the rust around the hatchback a door hinge problem and the new window motor oh, it took near enough 700 pounds as well £150 for this genuine sat nav of the same era as the car. £250 to the tyre shop, with that was the camber, some height adjustments, spacing and the tracking. Refurbished wheels, £250 there. £75 for the rear pop out windows. Brings it up to a total of £725-odd, but with the battery tray, rear lights and some car mats, I'm going to round that off to about £1,000. So, total spent on the car, a whopping £4,600. Money recovered from the parts that we got with the car, sold the rotor wheels for £375, Alpine stereo £75, sold the sub and the amp together as a whole tailor made unit that £140, sold the OMP steering wheel surprisingly for £175 quid, and I got £150 for the Scorpion end can and a middle straight through pipe. So with the 4,600 spent, 915 pounds got back. Puts us in at about just under 3,700 pounds that this car stands me in. Sounds a bit pricey, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna keep it for a while. I don't mind, that was money well spent.
sure what the end can is. Uh, the closest I could get to it in the Google Images was a blue wave exhaust, whatever that is. I love this genuine Volkswagen sat nav of the same era as the car. It reminds me of that old 1980s Robocop film. You know the tracker they used in that. What about tracking? You check his exact location at all times in one of these. This didn't have a lot of extras. Um, it's got aircon and that's about it. Ignore all the rest of the buttons down there. There is no way on earth this has got heated seats. They only come with the levers. I wish it did. I, I just picked up these buttons nice and cheap while I was looking around for some parts and for, yeah, we'll fill in the console. And it has done. Right, the car itself, 180,000 miles. And, you know, that's about 200, I don't know, 80,000 kilometers. Now people might say, well, you know, why'd you go and get a high mileage one? Well, it isn't. The car's 16 years old. That's average. And that's probably why I had to have the engine rebuilt. The good thing about it, though, when I bought the car, it had a reconditioned gearbox just put in. So I was well happy about that because the engine can be as expensive. I mean, the gearbox can be as expensive as the engine. Why did I buy it? I'll tell you why. I live in London and this little thing is just amazing the coping with London. Not so much the speed humps, but anyway. It's a 1.6 litre unit, 16 valve, throw back to the old Mark II 16 valves. I had one of them. Um, doesn't develop too much power, under 130 brake horsepower, but we've got a delicious six-speed gearbox, and with that combination of the engine and weight of this car, it is brilliant. It's, it's a perfect setup. I mean, we're doing uh, under 10 mile an hour, and I'm in third gear. Just trying to get past all these speed ups, really. The car is lowered, and I'm not gonna be pushed by people behind to go quicker. Since when did they do all this crap to this road? The later models come with traction control, though I don't know why you would want traction control on under 130 bhp, I don't know. But the amazing thing about this is the weight. Under a ton, which gives you whatever gear you drop it in, this is fifth. Amazing performance. GTI stable. Does this belong in there? Yeah, sure it does. I mean, you name me a Golf that got muscular arches, muscular bumpers, red seat belts, nearly two decades ago. This 1.6 litre engine was originally from the Polo 6N2. I had one of them as well, tasty motor, very similar to this. That was a couple of hundred kilos heavier, which makes this a bit more zingy. Now you see loads of reports with this new Up GTI that's come out, saying, oh, it's a throwback to the Mark I Golf GTI. Well, I'm really sorry, Volkswagen, and disappointed in Volkswagen. They were saying the same crap about this, uh, 15, 16 years ago, it was it was marketed as, as the same thing, a Mark I replacement, roughly the same weight but with more power. And you know, this was widely known. Volkswagen quite openly said, "Oh yeah, here you go. You want a Mark I again? You want that feel of the 1980s with the weight and everything? Go and get yourself a Lupo GTI." I mean, Vicky Butler covered this very well. Uh, back then, when she was still young and sexy. So, do we have a successor to the Golf's GTI title? You can't help but fall in love with this cheeky little chappy. He gives everything he's got 100% of the time. Great for the city, great for the country. He really is the best thing to come from VW's GTI stable in a very long time. Mind you, she's still right. The UP GTI 
TDI is the replacement for this, okay? It's the predecessor. It's not a predecessor to a throwback to an old Mark I Golf GTI that was better than both this and the UP. And they come out with the UP GTI, nowhere near as fancy, no arches, no, nothing distinctive. I mean, this as standard, standard Xenon headlights is because the, the normal default Lupo headlight won't even go into that slot. It's completely different. The front wing is shaped differently. The bonnet is shaped differently. It's all muscular this and muscular that. So of course they had to put different headlights on. On the default model where the indicator is, this is now a side light and a main beam. So they don't even look the same from the front coming towards you at night. You might not even notice there's a Volkswagen. And uh, hell, what am I saying? The way the front of this car has been styled has been Volkswagen's signature for decades now. Well, almost a hundred years, I would say. Volkswagen as the parent company always tends to give this beetle type round front look. And it's been passed on through other manufacturers as well. Other manufacturers that Volkswagen own. I don't know. I could just see them in the factories. Hey Klaus, don't throw away those lights. We may need them for a future model. They are wonderful design. Okay, Jürgen, we'll do that. Save it for the next model. Is she zippy enough? Yeah, I'll say. That's third gear, and we was only doing 40 miles per hour. Is she SMG worthy? Yeah. The gearing is so delicious. That, well, this gearbox is so delicious that you just throw in the gears and just responds to anything. I mean, we're in six gear. 
kill you. What a pillock. So okay folks, at some point we've got to end this video and uh, as I enjoy my cigarette and coffee and the eye candy that is this baby wolf, the expense, the work, the chores, all of that doesn't even cross my mind. Drive a Lupo GTI and you'll soon have a smile across your face. And if you're a petrol head, that would be a grin. And I don't care how much power you demand from your car. The Lupo suffers from a severe Napoleon complex and relentlessly seeks to impress you every time you take it out for a drive. And that's got to be priceless for anyone who enjoys motoring. And uh, with that, I want to thank you very much for watching the video and uh, come back soon because I'm sure there's a lot more to come from this little car. Do you want me to get bloody killed? Lupo GTI. She's brilliant. A diesel. Why do I always find you lot? Why do I always find you lot? Oh. Nearly two millennia ago. Millennia? Decades. Mate, we can both fit down here, you do know that, don't you? No, 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 wait, 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 what are we talking about? We were hitting 80, we don't care about the speed. This is what I'm trying to tell you, the speed is not coming in. No, it's not, it's come up a little bit. It's just facing that, the floor too No, 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 hey, trust me, I can see it from here. Oh, for sake, this thing. Oh, man. It's you nice don't, to see 40 miles an hour. You don't get that sensation. Right, look, I'll show you what it looks like here. See, do you see what I mean by it? it looks far away and it's not? Oh, I see what you mean. Right, because right. they're GoPros, they've got that fixed yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, that's a beautiful car. It is, Mum. Wicked. For sake, man. 
I'm gonna fucking sit there and wait for a fucking like this. Fucking hell, man. Come on!